Last year we predicted that the industry would go crazy with RGB LEDs and tempered glass, but we never thought it'd be to the extent that it is today. Now that we've had a full year to watch the industry get completely obsessed with this trend, we are revisiting new trends in computer hardware in a post CompuTex 2017 world. RGB LEDs have now gone a step further than previously, but companies are also starting to go crazy over copper heat sinks, hinged case panels, vertical GPU mounts, curved and shaped tempered glass, and more. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Corsair's new T1 race chair, which is a $350 gaming targeted chair using a bucket style race seat. The chair arms have four directional movement for configuration to your liking, and as a bonus, they use rollerblade wheels. Learn more at the link in the description below. The first trend to talk about relates to cases, as do the next two we'll discuss. This year, we noticed more hinged case doors than we've ever seen before. This was somewhat popularized on the 760T in 2014 and has slowly sprawled outward since then. This year, we saw hinged doors grow in popularity as a way to improve case side panel mounting. The hinged doors that were present on the Thermaltake V91TG, which fold out like suicide doors on a car, on the Level 20 GT, which uses 5mm glass panels on hinges, the 40-pound Corsair Concept Slate, the Cooler Master H500P, and the Cooler Master C700P, and all of these cases are moving to hinge doors that swing outward and can be easily removed by lifting them up. Tempered glass is also more frequently being shaped or curved and bent for cases now, which increases cost but fits well with the hinged doors. All of these aforementioned cases use some form of tempered glass with their hinged doors, making for something of a combo trend. C -c -c combo trend. And vertical GPU mounts are also big for this year. Vertical GPU mounts are featured in many of the previously mentioned cases as well and are a continuing trend of a further commoditized PC hardware market that is driven heavily by looks these days. The cases with vertical GPU mounts make them optional for showcasing video cards on the most part, as there's little functional gain from it. Some case manufacturers, like Silverstone, will use odd form factor motherboards with 90 degree bend PCIe slots to eliminate the need for riser cards. Others use inverted layouts. A good riser cable, like the common 3M solution, has a cost of $20 for the manufacturer alone. That's cost. That's huge. It's rare to find a good riser cable with these vertical orientations, but hopefully some of the manufacturers will start making those purchases and including them with their cases. It feels weird to be talking about airflow as a trend in cases, since that's sort of something you need, but the final trend in cases this year seems to be a light return in airflow as a consideration by case manufacturers, almost sadly so. The last two years, it seems like the entire industry moved to closed off front panels, but we're starting to see some manufacturers revert back to mesh front panels for better airflow. Among these, Inwin, who have learned from their Infinity and now placed the 806 with wood paneling on a list of cases that have more space between the front panel and the chassis for breathability. We also see this trend continued with the Silverstone cases coming out this year, at least some of them. Thermal takes cases like the G21TG and some of Cooler Master's cases where they compensate by using a wider mesh side intake and two 200 millimeter fans in the H500P. This, of course, means that marketing materials can now boast innovative intake designs, even though many of these designs were in vogue just a few years ago. That's really a typical cycle, just like phones, where they go bigger and then smaller, and everyone claims that it's the next big thing. Back in the world of aesthetics, digital RGBs are the next combo trend, merging the past year's RGB craze with highly controllable LEDs. The new digital RGB LEDs can often accommodate 7 bits of color per channel using a PWM that allows brightness and colors to be fine-tuned through software or pre-configured by the vendor. The PWM controller is also easy to deploy once it's configured, making this a more cost-friendly option than numerous RGB LED controllers across the same board for each strip of light. Digital LEDs will be prevalent on motherboards and video cards this year. At the show alone, we saw digital LEDs on nearly every Gigabyte motherboard, on the Asus motherboards, and also on MSI's 1080 Ti Lightning card, which placed them all over the backside and permitted configuration via a lighting center. Digital LEDs make for a smoother transition between colors and don't have the same hard edge as other LED strips that we commonly see, where you can make out the individual bulb on the strip. The digital LEDs look more like a smoothed out diffused color, 
So whether this is good or not really just depends on taste, but that is the next major trend. Copper heat sinks are the next major item. Hardware trends are all about what marketing language gets you the most sales, and it seems like the marketers of the world have decided that copper's price is now affordable enough to start using it as a badge of honor. These badges come shaped in fins, as companies like Leon Lee and Cryorig are now moving back to a world of copper heat sinks. Typically, we see copper for the cold plate for its conduction properties, and then aluminum for the fins, which is cheaper, lighter, and doesn't really impact cooling in a meaningful way in most situations. Copper fins haven't been popular since Zalman did it about 10 years ago, right before the price of copper skyrocketed, but it looks like they're going to be making a return on things other than just liquid cooling radiators. And so it's coming back, although it'll no doubt offer some benefit, this is largely a marketing move. Under steady state consumer conditions, copper isn't going to be that much cooler than aluminum, particularly considering the solder joints are the weak link between them anyway. It might be 1 to 2C cooler between identical devices when at steady state, but that's about it, assuming it's tested properly. The ramp up and ramp down speeds are slower with copper because of its greater density, which helps with thermal consistency when cooling components that experience sudden temperature spikes. This is similar in behavior to a liquid cooling radiator, which can handle a high amount of power throughput or wattage in heat and soaks the temperature changes better. Copper is also very expensive compared to aluminum, given that it's more limited in quantity and is much heavier. Copper is mostly impacting the cooling systems where there's more thermal mass, but for most consumer applications, we're dealing with parts that are often below 100 watts load, so that difference is mostly going to be felt in the wallet department not as much in the performance department. Finally, we also saw a trend in use of international rectifier power components on at least half of the motherboards at the show, including Gigabyte's entire lineup and what is likely on their X399 board in addition to X299 boards and MSI's lineup for X299 boards. The IR35201 voltage controller appears to be popular right now given its price and capabilities as it can serve up to eight total phases for the power design. This is often in 8 plus 0 or 6 plus 2 configurations, but the versatility of the controller makes it easy to buy in bulk and then configure across a wide range of motherboards at various prices. This is often bundled with IR35565 50 amp power stages that seem to be very popular with Computex 2017. And we'll have more info on all of these as Buildzoid's PCB breakdowns get uploaded to our channel. That recaps the major trends from Computex 2017 and those which will largely define the industry over the next year, just like Tempered Glass and RGB did last year. Let us know what you think of these in the comments section below. Which do you like, which don't you like, and what do you want to see next? Post that down below. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Stop that directly. store.gamersnexus.net for a shirt or subscribe for more. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.